stream two. All right. Have a great show, guys. We'll hear the music shortly. Great. Thank you. And it's on the YouTube page live as well, correct? There it is. How's everybody doing today? Welcome to the Somanad Show with Sonia. Thank you so much for joining us here this afternoon, this evening, wherever you are. I am so excited about our guest today because I brought another friend onto the show. And uh, without any further ado, we are going to get right into this interview because my friend is a busy man. He's got a lot going on. As soon as I introduce him, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So we are going to go ahead and get started. So again, welcome to the Solmanad Show with Sonia. I'm so glad that all of you are here. I would like to introduce to you my friend, my former coach, Coach Andre Patterson, defensive line of the Minnesota Vikings. Coach P, welcome to the show. No, thanks, Sonia. I'm really, really happy to be here with you. Honestly, it's kind of hard for me to see you like this. You're still my little girl. You know I mean? know, and you're my and you're my coach. <laughs> no, this is great. It's great to, to be here with you. You, I, I will always be your little girl. You know what? We'll, we'll both be in our walkers. You know, in our 80s, and you'll still be saying, "You're still my little girl." That's exactly right. That's exactly right. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Okay, so y'all don't know this, but last year, uh, almost to the day when we were first um, getting started here into all this COVID, um, I had interviewed Coach P, but I was attempting to do it myself. And y'all know I'm 53 and I have missed this technology by about a generation. And y'all know Coach P isn't so great with this technology stuff either. So I had interviewed Coach. We had a great time together, you guys. But I did not save the the interview properly, so we've been talking about this for for a long time. Getting it, getting this interview on here today, so I'm bringing you Coach Andre Patterson here to you today. And uh, Tevin, my producer's out there. He's going to cover the lines. And hey, Louie, glad you're here, brother. Hey, TC, what's up? Tina Corsi's on here, Coach. Oh, hey, Tina. <laughs> <laughs> Tina Luisa. Oh my goodness, she says, "Hey, Coach P, she misses you." Uh, so. And I know there's going to be a lot of Vikings fans on. Coach P and I both live right here in the Twin Cities. And, you know, God brought Vernon and I here about four years ago. So we've been able to get together and... Uh, it's just such a blessing. But uh, for so many of you guys, hey, Bruce, how's it going? <laughs> for so many of you guys that don't know, Coach P was my softball coach, my senior of high school. I was the pitcher. He was this young, hot, smoking hot, young coach that came <laughs> from coaching and playing football in Montana. And he came right there to Seattle, Washington at Renton High School, where he was my head coach. And uh, it was just, uh, there we are. Look at us, Coach. Yeah, so that's he, a great picture in that great so we've yeah. got i'm standing right there next to coach yeah and then uh we have val and we have kelly this is actually just the seniors but mm -hmm. we have val and kelly and then we have tammy and we have Susie and candace and rita and so there we are there's just the seniors but um just some of the greatest memories of my life it was um just such an honor to uh to serve under you and to play into you under you and to learn and glean from you coach well i'm gonna tell you sonia i tell people all the time i get asked a lot of questions you know who was your number one mentor in coaching and what are some of the things that over the years that you've learned that that kind of helped your coaching style and, sure and, you know terry ennis that i who i came here to work for as uh in football uh, was one of my greatest mentors as a coach and yeah. 
you guys did a great job of helping me form my style of coaching, you know, and I, I always tell people a story, you know, in practice, you guys worked your tail off for me. You know, we worked hard every day and, you know, we hadn't had a lot of success, but we were going to prove everybody wrong. Mm-hmm. And I forget, we're on the bus going to our first softball game. And and all you guys are in the back of the bus having a great old time. And I'm sitting there in the front and I'm losing my mind in my head because as a football coach, everybody's quiet on the bus, going to the game. You're trying to get pumped up for the game. Nobody says a word. I remember I stand up on the bus. I said, hey, constantly. You guys calm down. We're getting ready to go play a game. You got to get your minds right. And you turn around, looked at me, goes, come on, Coach P. We'll be ready to play when it's game time. We'll be ready. All right. And and you kept doing what you were doing. And we yeah. got to the field, took in the field. Once you guys hit the field, the focus just snapped right in. And, and yeah. so that was a learning experience for me as a coach that, you know, you don't have to get yourself all out of all out of sync and all out of control mentally, you know, before you That's even right. get stadium you know and and so that was a great learning experience for me as coach Mm -hmm. yeah that's so true and you know i i think my mentality i know was always you know keeping it chill just keeping it chill and staying loose you know and staying relaxed and all the sports i played my entire life i i i didn't understand the necessity and the importance of being so intense you know we can still dial it in and tune it in you know when it's when it's go time right but why not just just be chill and and it's it was also such a great way to bond with your teammates Mm -hmm. no question Mm -hmm. again like i said it was it was a learning experience for me so you know years later when i when i got my first job in the national football league um, it wasn't a surprise to me to see that the nfl players were just like you guys you know, they don't, they don't get they don't get serious until they come in the locker room after pregame warm up. You know, yeah. they get to the stadium. You would think it was practice. It's loud in the locker room. Guys mm-hmm. playing music, laughing and joking. They go out for pregame. It's the same way. But when they come in after pregame, that's when things start to change. And uh, so um, you guys did the same thing. And so that kind of prepared me for that. And uh, it was a great learning experience for me as a coach. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. No, you're just my all time favorite uh, coach. I've, I've, I've talked about you now. I've, I've always talked about you. Never stop. I know, uh, you know, my teammates, you know, we always get together talking about you all the time. Like, you were just you were just the best. And um you know, you, you, you just helped to make us and mold us. I know for me personally, you literally spoke so much truth and wisdom into my life just as a, as a person, as a young woman. And you had a key role in shaping me and forming me into the woman that I am today. So I thank you. Well, I appreciate that. And that, that means a lot to me. And, uh, you know, I, I tell you, people see me now as a, as a professional football coach, but I say all the time, I'm a teacher. That's what I do. And, Always. And that's, you know, that's I take pride in, in uh, being a teacher and trying to teach lessons, you know, just like I did with you guys, Sonia. I still do that with these guys here. Sometimes I have my meeting and I don't even talk about football. Mm-hmm. We talk about life. You know, I talk to yep. them about, you know, being good fathers, great husbands, um, you know, great sons. Um, guys that have children that are not married, you know, being in their kids' lives, mm-hmm. you know, so all those things are very important because that one day they're going to stop being a football player. They cannot be a football player forever. So right. if all I ever teach them to do is how to be a better football player than I'm cheating them. You know, I got to let learn some of my life experiences. So that helps them grow as people. And, and that's what this thing is all about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. I mean, you, you just focus on the, those those pillars and of wisdom and where they can glean from that because they will apply those life lessons um, that will shape them into, into who they are as as men going on this season of being play uh, a player. You know, it will come and, and it will go. But those lessons and that that life and that wisdom that you are speaking into their lives, they'll, they'll take that on forever. And you yourself, coach, uh, that's another thing that I just want to add is um, a constant, constant man of integrity, uh, Coach P. You, you well, always have been. Yeah, I try to be, and that's real important to me. And, um, you know, I, I try to make sure that I uh, live my life in the right way. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I treat people uh, with respect and dignity and, uh, and, and, and that everyone has importance. 
you know, no matter what you do, everyone has importance. That's and that's, right. that's, that's real important to me. And, you know, when, when they asked me, I go back to Renton High School again, and they asked me to take a softball job. I had been a baseball coach and they asked me to take the softball job. And I said, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll do it. You know, but when I said I was going to do it, I was going to do it to the best of my abilities because I owed that to you, to you guys. I That's owed right. it to you guys. And so, um, and, and I was so appreciative that even though I was demanding, you guys, you guys went with it. And I tried to make it fun Absolutely. at the same time too, but we worked, you know, we worked. And, and, yes, you, know, we did. and, and you guys took pride in outworking our baseball team, you know, mm-hmm. they, they thought they were big and bad and we outworked our baseball team. And we, yes, we did. Bad. That's because of the time and effort that we put in every day in practice and it carried over and it showed in the games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And and it it was so evident to us. I mean, you were, you know, a football player, a football coach, and and that's what, you know, brought you to Renton High School to to coach under uh, Coach Ennis and, you know, to coach these young men. But here, you know, we were this group of girls. Now, we were, excuse me, a bunch of strong, badass girls, Mm -hmm. but you did not treat us any less. Mm -hmm. You know, the standard was still the same, and you did not put any uh, uh, more importance for coaching the football team than you did coaching the softball team. And that was evident in the daily, and I can say, buckets of sweat because... (laughs) You ran as hard, which it just it fit with our personalities, though, because we were intense and you were intense. You know, no question. And, and uh, you know, and that was the thing is, is, you know, you guys were going to give back to me what I gave to you. And that's, you know, I wanted you to see I was giving my all. I wasn't just doing this to get a little extra stipend on my check. I, no. We were, we're going to try to win. You know, we were yep. going to try to win and we we're going to try to be the best. And and, uh, and that was a great thing about it. Yeah, and then take those lessons and go on and win in life. Yes. Yeah, okay, so Tina just put something on here, Coach. She says, one of the best pieces, I didn't get my glasses. You know I'm a certain age now, Coach. Uh, or maybe you're a little girl, but I'm a 53-year-old little girl. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Tina says, one of the best pieces of advice I got from Coach was a life lesson. He said, it's easy to do the wrong thing, but sometimes it's hard to do the right thing. It takes work to be better. And by the way, piggybacking on that, uh, Debbie Cobb is on here. Debbie Cobb and Smith is on it here with us now too. So, so the, the, the band is getting back together not right about, here, coach. Not about it. That's great. That's great. Yeah. I, I, Tina, I still use that today with my guys here too, you know, and you know, sometimes I practice, I'll yell out to them. It's not easy being great. You know, when they're feeling, when they're feeling sorry for themselves and it's hot out mm-hmm. there, they're tired of hitting people, you know, I yell at them, Hey, it's not easy being great. You know, That's if right. it easy, anybody could do it. You know, it's hard and it takes yep. sacrifice. It takes commitment yep. in order yep. for you to, to work to be great. Yep. That bar is up here. That standard is up here. That expectation is up here. No to whom much is given, much is required. No question. No question. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing mm-hmm. in life, you know, and I and I, I take that and I, and I bring it back to home. You know, I, yeah. you know if, if you're going to be if you're going to be married and you're going to have a lifetime relationship, it's not going to be great every day. That's, no. that's realistic for you to think that, right? So you're going to work through, you're going to have to work through rough times and tough times. And, but, on the, but on the backside of it is greatness. So yeah. it's supposed to be hard and it's not supposed to be easy. And, and right. people have to hear that because what they get from the media, what they get from, from outside sources tell me everything is going to be easy. It's going to come easy for you. And all I know is everything that I've ever had that's been great in my life, you know, has come with hard times. And when yes. you throw it, then you, then you have a chance to, uh, to enjoy the greatness on the other side. Mm-hmm. Absolutely absolutely worth all the blood sweat and tears and that's where that blessings just come on that backside you know if things are handed to you on a silver platter and you don't have to work for anything you don't you don't you don't covet it you don't nurture it you don't mm-hmm. appreciate it nearly as much as if you worked for it and you earned it and you busted your butt to get to that 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 place of blessing and that place of success whether it's in your career your marriage your you know your your job just in every single Single aspect of life, and see, there you are, Coach. You're still giving all these these <laughs> life lessons. You are you're constantly the, the teacher. <laughs> well, you know, I, I I tell them too. You know, Sonia. You know, say your dream car was a was a Mercedes Benz. Okay, mm-hmm. 
and you had to work 15 years to save money to finally buy that car. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when, when you, once you get that car, are you never going to wash it? Never going to clean the inside of it? You know, not, not check the oil, not put gas in it? No. I mean, nope. you worked hard to get that thing. You're going to make sure it is spotless every day. You're going to check everything on that car because you had to work so hard to get it. And, and, and that's the way you should look at things that are important to you in your life, whether it's, you know, your, your wife, your husband, your children, whatever it may be, um, you know, it, it, you got to make sure that you appreciate it and you put the time and effort uh, to continue to make it grow. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, Debbie uh, Cobb just uh, chimed in here and she said, you know, you have worked so hard for all that you have accomplished. And I just think that that's the perfect segue, Coach. You know, for our viewers, can you just share a little bit of your background, you know, growing up in the Bay Area and, and, and playing there locally and then college from there? Yeah, I, uh, I, I'm from Richmond, California in the Bay Area. I went to Harry O's High School. Uh, from there, I went to Contra Costa Community College, and then I got a scholarship to play at University of Montana. Um, and then while I was there, I met the love of my life. Um, and then when I graduated from University of Montana, I went to Renton High School and coached there for, and taught there for three years. It was an outstanding experience for me and then left there and, uh, and became the head coach and dean of students at St. Monica's High School in Santa Monica, California. And then from there, I got my first college job at Weber State University. And that was the first time that I worked under uh, Mike Zimmer, the head coach mm -hmm. here at the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, and I left there and I went to Western Washington in Bellingham, Washington. And I was a defensive coordinator there. And then left there and went to Cornell University in Ithaca, New York, and was the uh, D-line coach and assistant head coach. And then left there and then went back to Washington State, where I worked under Mike Zimmer again as a defensive line coach. Uh, and then and then I got my first head coaching opportunity in college, and I was went and became the head coach at the uh, at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. And then from there, I got my first opportunity in the National Football League, and I worked at the New England Patriots under uh, Pete Carroll and then left New England and came to Minnesota the first time uh, in 1998 under Denny Green. And uh, I was here in 98, 99, and then left and then went and coached for the Dallas Cowboys again under Mike Zimmer, who was the defensive coordinator of the Cowboys at the time. Uh, and then from there, I went to Cleveland Browns. And then from the Cleveland Browns uh, to the Denver Broncos, and then from the Denver Broncos, I went back to college football and I was at UNLV um, and then uh, went to UTEP as a defense coordinator at uh, Texas El Paso, then uh, then to FIU. And then the past eight years, I've been back here in Minnesota with the Vikings. Coaching under another great coach, one of the all time greats, I think, uh, uh, Coach Z and, and uh, Coach Pete Carroll. Do you concur? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no question. And, mm -hmm. uh, I learned a lot from Pete when I was with him, and we're still good friends to this day. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it's you know, I, you know, Minnesota was a great place for uh, for us the first time. My wife and I really, really loved it here um, when we were here the first time, and then to have the opportunity to come back, I jumped at it, and we're so happy to be here in Minnesota. And you know, to us, this is our home. Yeah, absolutely, and and I'm glad that you're here. And I know Minnesota is very happy that you're here to coach. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we love to be here. You know, my daughter was born here. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, so she had heard all the stories about Minnesota as she was growing up. So, you know, by the time we came back, she was really excited to, to you know, experience what we had talked about all the time about you know, the great state of Minnesota. Mm hmm. Well, I want to take it back just a little bit because I do want to say kudos and congratulations to you, Coach, because in March of 2020, February, March-ish, just before COVID came and put us all in lock, <laughs> you were inducted into the Hall of Fame at JFK, JFK High School there, your, um, your high school there in the Bay Area. Can you share a little bit about that with us? Um, it was, uh, you know, Sonia, that was a tremendous honor for me. I was surprised. 
uh, when they called. I didn't even know that they were having a vote for it. And and I got a call from an old high school friend and said, hey, you you just been inducted into the Hall of Fame. And I thought he was kidding with me. Um, so it was a tremendous honor for me and my family, you know, for the city to think that I was someone worthy, you know, of that honor. Um, mm -hmm. I take tremendous pride in that. And, uh, you know, my hometown is a pretty rough place. And mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people make it out of there. Um, so for me to have the opportunity to do that and for them to think that, uh, you know, I was one of the best players to play, you know, out of the city there is a tremendous honor to me. And, you know, I still have a lot of pride in that uh, to this day. Yeah, and you know it, it, it is it's not too not too shoddy because a lot of talent came out of that region. Yeah, yeah, no, a lot of great players, and <laughs> I think that was the thing that was you know probably the most shocking thing to me because I remember all those guys that, mm -hmm. that played before me or with me, and I'm like, man, they they're taking me in before this guy or with this guy. So it was it was, it was kind of you know it was it was very humbling uh, experience. Mm -hmm. uh, Some of that that was very prideful for me, and I know it was a big deal for my family also. Yeah, it definitely was. And uh, that was about the time that you saw your mom pre-COVID. And we had just shared a picture of you and Donna there on the screen, your wife. Of, you guys just had a big anniversary this year as well, didn't you? Yeah, it's been a long time. Yeah, I, I get in trouble because I forget the numbers. You know, I, you know me, son. You got all so much, so much stuff going through my head. <laughs> <laughs> We've been together uh, since 1982. Yeah. Uh, you know, and so... Uh, you know, it's it's I, I am so thankful and it's a blessing from God that uh, yeah. you know, that I that I'm still with with the person that I fell in love with. And yeah. we love each other more today than when mm -hmm. we first met each other. And she's my best friend. Yeah. And like I tell people all the time, I'm still tricking her. and She still hasn't figured it out yet, Sonia. <laughs> She still hasn't figured it out yet. I, I got I to keep doing that. So she hasn't figured it out to leave me. So that, that's a good thing. <laughs> nah, 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 Coach. I beg to differ. She knows that she has a gem in you, and, and you know that she is your queen. Yeah. And it is evident with you two together. And look at the beautiful family that you created and raised together. And somebody has a grandbaby on the way. Yes, yeah, very exciting. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, so we're keeping our fingers crossed and, um, you know, it's exciting that, uh, yep. you know, we got a, a grandson maybe be here at some point. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just, the bad thing is it's going to be a spoiled little kid, you know, because uh, between my wife and myself, I don't know if I'm going to be able to say no. So uh, that's the way I am with my daughter. You know that, Sonia. She can I know. Her finger. She can get whatever she wants. All she's got to do is give me those big eyes and it's over with. And so I can't imagine what a grand, what a grand kid would be able to get for me <laughs> i can't imagine i know that's what i was i was thinking of telling simone and spencer they don't have kids yet you know but when those babies come it's going to be problematic because i i don't know how they think that baby's going back home because that baby needs to stay with grandma <laughs> there's no question you know that you no know, my my son surprised us you know they came over for dinner and uh when dinner was over he was like his wife wanted a uh, shake and my wife goes, I got ice cream. You can make sure. No, she always wants it from Dairy Queen. So we kind of thought that was kind of weird. So he left, you know, and he came back with a couple of shakes. And then he, he had these uh, these lottery ticket scratch off deals. So he gave me one, my wife, his wife one. So we're, I'm sitting there and I'm scratching the thing off and scratching it off. And and then finally we get to the other side. I started scratching it off to match the stuff. And then right. as I start to get it over, there's a, there's a baby crib there. And then it says having a baby. And I go, mine says having a baby. I still didn't figure it. Mine says having a baby. And then my wife, and then she looks up and she goes, are you pregnant? If she goes, yes. So then my wife starts bawling. Uh, that, uh, and uh, so it was, it was, it was, uh, it was very exciting. So, but the next day, my son gets a call from, from Oregon State and they mm -hmm. wanted him to interview for the running back job. Mm -hmm. And so he's going to take the interview. So I come home and uh, I tell my wife, hey, you know, AC kind of offered to, to get an interview for the running back job at uh, Oregon State. And she goes, good. And then she just starts bawling and crying. You know, he yeah. leave. he's getting ready to have a baby. And I'm like, you can't do that. To him. He's got he's to go his own way. He's got to be his own man. You know, oh. and, uh, so he went through the interview and 
Um, you know, he didn't get the job, but uh, but it was she was kind of she was real scared right there. That to, you know, yeah. for two hours, one was so excited, and the next one she's getting ready to lose <laughs> two babies, her baby <laughs> and her, the grandbaby. <laughs> right, right. That that's enough to de- to devastate a mama, a grandmama. No doubt about that. No doubt about that. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, Coach. So we need to get you you and Donna over here. I keep saying I'm going to cook for you because you know I and cook. I need to get you all over at the house. And uh, you're always so busy, though. And even in the off season, uh, are you guys all going to go down to one of my resorts again this summer before you things start up again? Yeah, we're going to try to if everything is, uh, you know, once they give us the okay off the COVID. Yeah, it needs to be safe. You know, I've taken it. I've taken it, you know, Sonia, very seriously. You know, it's hit my family. Um, You know, my mom had it. Um, mm-hmm. My mother's, my aunt, my mother's sister's uh, sister had it. Uh, my my sister had it. Uh, mm-hmm. My mom and my auntie mm-hmm. almost died from it. You know, so for me, you know, obviously I have some of their genes. So mm-hmm. you know, I, I take it real seriously. Yep. You know, I, I I do all the things that they tell us to do. Um, That's right. I, I go to work and I go home. I haven't mm-hmm. been in a restaurant. I haven't been, I haven't been in a grocery store. None. Mm-hmm. You know, I get gas, I go home and I come to work. That's all yeah. I do. Um, yeah. So I'm hoping it, I'm hoping that things get better. And mm-hmm. um, so we have a chance to you know, go back and experience life the way yeah. that we, we were in the past. Yeah. Yeah. I know we've been talking through COVID, just kind of checking, seeing how you're doing and everything. And yeah, we're, we're very similar. We really are not, you know, playing games with this. We just take turns every 10 days or two weeks going to the store and uh, just really lying low. I just started to go on a couple trips recently and I, I will only hop on a Delta jet because it's half empty, if not more. And um, my mask does not come off. I keep that on. I'm just really careful. I mean, it, it's called a pandemic for a reason. <laughs> question, question. Mm-hmm. It's real. And, and I think, I think, you know, when, when it touches you, it makes it, it makes it uh, yeah. easy for it to be real for you. And, yeah. and when, when, when all you, when all you're doing is seeing what you see on TV and, you know, what you read or what you see online, it, you know, it can make it easy for you not to believe that it's real or, mm-hmm. or, or that it can really harm you. But when it touches, you know, part of your family or people that you know, um, then you know that it's real and, and you yeah. have to respect it and, and, and do things the correct way. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Debbie Cobb, she just said that she's living live the COVID dream. So, Debbie, are you saying that that you're like enjoying the lockdown and kind of being at home and safe? And because I got to tell you, Vernon and I, we're we're doing just fine, you know, being at home. We love each other. I love my house. I'm cooking a lot. I might have a few extra COVID loving pounds, but you know, that's all good. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. You look great. So you look great. Don't worry about it. Exactly. We've been married 30 years, so it's all good. And it's, you know, just making the best of a bad situation. And we talk about that so, so much here on Soul Monad. That's a Soul Monad way, the importance of finding, you know, health and balance in the soul, mind and body and just really seeing that glass is half full and just, you know, embracing that that positive outlook and that positive attitude, you know, and just always being an optimist. I, I know, Coach, that's how we always connected because you're wired the same way. No question. There's, it's not going to do you any good to be negative you know right. and, you know you know you know obviously as we get older our parents get older you know and yeah. so my wife and, and myself are, have some issues with our parents and so on and so forth yeah. and you know the one thing I tell her all the time is you know it doesn't do you any good to sit and just let your mind go crazy over mm-hmm. things you can't control. Yeah. If you can't control it, then there's no need for you to continue to stress on it because if you could, you would change it. Yep. You would change it if you could. If you don't have the ability to change it, then you need to let it go. Just let it go because all you're doing is harming yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think when I, and she told me when I explained it to her that way, she uses it all the time that when she mm-hmm. starts to feel stressed, she goes, okay, can I change it? 
Do I have the ability to change it? And that's she right. herself no, and now she has the ability to let it go. And I, and I think mm-hmm. that's the biggest thing is, you know, we we put too much stress on ourselves to deal with things that we don't have control over. And really all we're doing is harming ourselves because we yep. don't have the ability to change it. And that's just a matter of fact with the whole thing. Yeah. And, you know, being being so stressed and and being so anxious, you know, that's just that's just releasing toxins into our body. And it's just, you know, it's just raising that stress hormone. And, you know, that's where we just say if there's if this is not within your realm of control, if there's nothing that you can do about said subject, you know, that's when you just let go and let God and you yeah. just have to have that faith and just hold on to that that positive uh, perspective, you know, and uh, and stay stay focused on. On, on what is good and what is just and what is right and 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 how we are blessed. There's always a blessing somewhere. No question. There's always that silver lining. No question. And you know, I always go back to, you know, God's not going to give us more than we can handle. Okay, that's we're right. going to have to go through tough times. You know, it, but that's the good thing. When you fight through it, you come out the other side. There's something great standing on the other side. And yep. you know, it's just it's just convincing ourselves in our mind to, you know, sometimes going through bad things are good for you, even though it's right. uncomfortable and we don't like it. So it's, sometimes it's good for you. And, and that's just the way that's just the way life is for us. And we just have to embrace it. Yeah. Amen to that. Amen to that. You know, there's there's always a reason for it or reason behind it. We may not see or understand all. And, you know, that's where that faith comes in because we don't need to see and understand all. You know, there's so many times where I, you know, I can't see a direction that I need to go or an angle. And I and I will pray and say, Lord, give me the eyes to see what I'm supposed to see. Mm-hmm. And then we need to trust that, yes, you know, we, he'll give us that which we need to see. And after that, you know, we don't have to have all the answers, you know. We just walk by faith, not by sight, have a great attitude, a great outlook, and and just ask to see, be able to see the silver lining somewhere because it's always there. And as we go through the refiner's fire, we just, we come out better. We come out stronger. You know, we, we come out just, just with more wisdom and, and, and with more, more fortitude and, you know, we're, we're better because of it. No question. There's no question about that. And, and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, there's, there's been a lot of things going on. You know, we went through, we're still going through the COVID thing. You know, all the thing that, things that happened here in Minneapolis and across, <laughs> we, you know, were, were, were difficult on all of us. Uh, but if you, if you sit back and you look at some of the things that happened, there's a lot of positives that went on there too. You know, I, I'm a child of the 60s, you know, so, uh, you know, I was I was growing up doing the, doing the civil rights movements and all those kind of things. And, you know, to see the different types of people that were out there uh, in support and yeah. uh, and very touched by it really touched my heart. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't just a black problem, you know. Right. It was a, it was a humane problem, right? That's right. Humanity that's right. Problem. And once it starts to be seen like that, that's when change can happen. So mm-hmm. it wasn't about you know uh, it's only black people doing this because it only affects the black community. It, it was different, and that's the first time that I've seen that in my lifetime. And so that that was a real mm-hmm. positive thing for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, um, t- I was going to touch on this later, but I can just say, you know, the 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 increase in the the anti-Asian crimes that's happening across the country, you know, uh, so it is with them just as it is with anybody else of, of any of the other race is when they're wounded, we are wounded. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, when when crimes are committed against them, crimes are committed against me. No Crimes are committed against us all. And I think that there is a paradigm shift that has been beginning to take place here in America where perspectives are changing. Mindsets and ideologies are finally, hallelujah, shifting. Mm-hmm. And more people that have been over here are now starting to come back over this way. And, and they are coming into a place of greater understanding. Right, right. And, and we'll take all of it one step at a time, one person at a time. No question. Yeah. You know, and Sonia, I, I got asked the question, obviously, you know, with me being a high profile person, you know, the media was, you know, came running to me right from the beginning, you know, and, and one of the things that I told them, it was, you know, one of the biggest things that happened with the Floyd deal was the whole world got a chance to see it. Yep. Right. 
So it's different when people are saying that this happened and, and people say, well, a police officer would never do that. Okay, a police officer, the guy had to do something wrong. A police officer would never do that. Well, when they got to see it with their own eyes, I think that was the thing that woke a lot of people up because they got to see it. Okay, this really does happen. They're telling the truth. This really does happen. Yes. So I, I think that was a real pivotal moment, you know, in our society. Yeah, I agree. And if if you look historically, the way that 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 everybody came up, the way that we were raised, you know, 100 years ago, 50, 60, 40 years ago, is, you know, police officers and law enforcement, you know, could do no wrong. Mm-hmm. And but but some folks, they almost, um, you know, idolize them and have them as a half a step below Jesus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and yeah. they, you know, like the Bible says, they are but a man. Mm-hmm. They are men and women in their profession, no different than you and myself right. or anybody else in, in any other field. And, and, and people uh, can make mistakes. Right. People can have hate in their heart. People can be deceptive and corrupt and commit crimes, whether they're a police officer, whether they're a nurse, whether they're a minister, no matter who they are. Right, well, they are human beings. That's it right there. That's that's the deal. When it's all said and done and what it comes down to, they're human beings, right? And we're yep. all flawed. Yep, right? that's right. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. And so the thing we try to do is is to is to rise above that. You know, mm-hmm. rise above that. There's no perfect person. There's no perfect person. It doesn't. No. It doesn't exist. And it's. It's. Are you willing to make change when you make a mistake? Yeah. You know. And so that's what it comes down to. And and uh, and, I, and I think mm-hmm. sometimes that that we forget that that we put people on a pedestal because of their title, and we mm-hmm. forget that they're just a human being and they have the same issues that we have. Mm-hmm. You know. And that's why I tell my players all the time. You know, money's not going to ch- change. No. The issues that you have in actuality is going to give you more problems. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it doesn't right. anything. It just doesn't. You know, you're mm-hmm. still going to have the same issues that everybody does. And uh, yeah. so you have to learn how to deal with those because mm-hmm. they're going to come your way. That's just the way mm-hmm. it is of, of being a part of being a human being. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I, I think that that comes with a warning. And I'm, I'm always saying woe to the man or woman who holds another human being up to such a high regard that mm. that that it, it's almost as if they are not human right. that they that they are without blame or without without speckle without flaw and you know that that you're entering a dangerous mental no space no question there's no question about that and yeah you know, i can i can i can respect you Mm-hmm. Right. right. I can respect you. But mm-hmm. as soon as I as soon as I put you on a high pedestal because of what you do, okay, then I, that puts me in a place where I can I can make bad decisions. Yep. You know, yep. I can make bad decisions. So that, yep. that's the most important thing. Yeah. You know, um, the Bible says God is no respecter of persons. Right. So, you know, we we should follow that and and we should be treating, you know, the janitor the same as the CEO. OK, uh, we can have a respect for the office, for the position or, you know, whatever. But but just, you know, piggybacking on what you said, uh, you know, we treat everybody. We should be treating everybody with the same regard and, and right. the same respect uh, and the same level of kindness. And for these crimes that are going on, like I was saying, you know, this wave of of um, of anti-Asian uh, um, s- sentiment and and crimes that are being committed. You know, I have a friend here, uh, Louis Tran. He's he was a former guest here on Solmanad, and he's a photojournalist right here in the Twin Cities. Um, a friend of mine, and he just chimed in, and he was agreeing with us. Yes, and he said that he has been yelled at for being Asian. And um, you know, I, I think that I know that America can do better. I put a post out today. And, you know, I said, be alert, be aware, each and every one of us stand up against racism in your home, in your workplace, in your community. And yes, I said in your church, Mm -hmm. stand up and put a stop to it. And collectively, we can certainly make a tremendous difference. One of the taglines here at Solmanad is together we can, together we will. 
Mm-hmm. And I believe that and I stand on that. And I believe that there are more of us who are who are like minded and share my heart in that. And I just thank you. But we all need to come together and lock arms shoulder to shoulder and lock our hearts together in this season and, and rise up against it because whoever this twenty one year old lost soul was that that shot these individuals there are far fewer of them than there are of us and love wins and we no will question. put that in the foreground amen no question it, 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 you know and the thing Sonia that you end up find out is that you know there's something in those people's past yep you know that 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 makes them want to find a way to put people beneath them because yeah. they've been they've been made to believe their whole life that they're below. So right. I got to fight like heck to find a way to put me above somebody because yeah. the people that 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 I'm around that I'm comfortable with are always making me feel down here. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I got to find a way to put myself above somebody in order to make me feel good. You yeah. know, and I, to me, I think that's the core of the issue is that until we are able to get into those communities, and to and to, and to uh, stop that among their own selves, where where they're trying to make people feel down to make themselves feel strong, because in the end, those people turn around and go try to get somebody else to put uh-huh. them down. And I think that's where it all starts. Yeah, it's it's a it's a root of of insecurity. It's their mm-hmm. own insecurity. And although you know they you know just go go, go back to your typical bully, right? Mm-hmm. Well, now there's bully billionaires and bully ceos you know and um you know they're they're trying to project themselves as being so confident and so powerful and so strong but actually they they just feel like a little tiny small person Mm -hmm. and they have all of their their own insecurities and and they're not contending with that in dealing with that in healthy ways and so then you have this this evil and this sin and this vile action uh you know but uh we we can overcome it together coach we can i agree i agree 100 percent. yeah 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 definitely well coach i i want to be cognizant of your time i know that you're in the middle of this whole uh combine thing and zoom and <laughs> y'all have to interview these kids now on zoom instead no of question. meeting with them and <laughs> no question i'm starting to get too old for this on you <laughs> I tell you, and that's throughout the league. Everybody is out there. All these coaches are. You can't even meet with the kids anymore. You have to. Right. You have to go through a computer like this and hope that you can discern who they are and what makes them tick and no and question. whether or not they fit with your program or not. That's that's a tough call, coach. Yeah, that's tough. It's it's, it's hard to do, <laughs> uh, you know. But I, I still I still try to find a way to make them laugh. Yeah. Don't try to find a way to make them uncomfortable. Yeah. And in the end, I find a way the best way I can to love them up a little bit. Yeah. You know, yeah. so I think if I can get them through all three emotions, they won't forget this big head talking to them. So yeah. that's, that's no, the they won't thing they try to do. <laughs> no, they won't. OK, a couple rapid fire things before uh, before I let you sign off and, and move on to a couple other points you have on the show. All right. So bucket list. Um, which country would you like to uh, travel to uh, before the Lord takes you home and your life here on Earth is over? That's a tough one. Sign you because you know my wife always gets tell me that it's good. I got to start thinking about retiring, and I don't yes. know what I would do. I got I got no hobbies. I don't do anything. You know, travel. You know, <laughs> when, when, you know when we when we when we took the trip that you talked me into going. Yes. Okay, other than being in an NFL team and going to Japan and Mexico, that was the first time I've ever left the country on my own free will. I know. I couldn't believe it. I was like, what? <laughs> and I mean, it was a great time. It was one of the best times I've ever had. So that's why I'm saying it's a hard question for me because I've never thought about it. I really haven't. I, you know, I haven't really thought about going anywhere else because I, I've always been afraid to leave the country. And, that, and, 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 and so, you know, you, you, were, you were the one that convinced me to do it. And I did it. I had a great time and I would love to do it again. 
<laughs> All right, then, then maybe I'll have to reach out and grab you and Donna, grab the kids. I'll grab Vernon, and we'll just have to go do, go do a trip together. You know what? Maybe we'll take you down uh, to the resort in the Dominican. Ooh. You love the Dominican people. They are okay. beautiful people. It's a gorgeous resort, so we'll talk off air about that okay. then, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get it, get you out there traveling again. All right, next question. Uh, who, out of all of your coaching, all of your sports, my goodness, going back 35 years, 38, 40 years, now um who was your favorite player to coach and why wow you just like giving me the tough ones yeah that, that is a that is a that is a really tough question you know um i i would say you know john rando is all-time favorites and not just because he was a great player mm-hmm. but his story you know yeah. and, how where he was raised, how he was raised, how he came into this league as a free agent, mm. um, and, and and to become one of the best all time to play his position in the history of the National Football League, and and to get paid a lot of money and still never change, still be yeah. that guy that worked hard every single day. I mean, it's yeah. uncommon, you know. And I, I I never forget he he signed the richest contract in the history of the NFL when I was coaching him. Mm. And we go out to Vegas one day, and it's the middle of two a days, and this guy is just, you know, working unbelievable. I mean, just just working himself into the ground. And I walked over to him, and I said, I said, Johnny, you know, how can you do this? How can you how can you work this hard every day? Everybody out here is sore. We're having to force guys to go hard. You go hard every day. How how do you do that? Mm-hmm. I mean, what are you taking? You know. So he goes, Coach, come to my locker after practice. I said, okay. So practice is over and I go to his locker and he's got a picture in his locker of the house that he grew up in with a tin roof. Okay. Two bedrooms, outhouse with, with, uh, with, with 11 people living in it, cement floor. Okay. And he goes, coach, every day I look at that picture and he goes, you know, I could be working on the railroad like one of my brothers. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, knocking in railroad ties. He said, but I get to play a game. This isn't hard. This isn't hard, you know? And so that really, that really hit me. And so I have a great deal of respect for, for, for who he is as a person Mm -hmm. and and what he was able to accomplish. So, you know, I think when I answer that question, I think it's an easy answer because he was a great player, but it has nothing to do with him being a great player, you know, the kind of person that he is and him able to do things that was uncommon. Most of us, when, when we, when we make it to where we don't ever have to work a day in our life, we change, you know, that, that desire to just go out there and grind leaves us. Yep. He, he was uncommon. So that's, that's mm-hmm. what, that's why I give, that's why I would say it would be him. He was not despising the day of his small beginnings. Mm-hmm. No question. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No question. Yeah. I love the opportunity to interview him sometime because all of the professional athletes I've interviewed in the last 10 years, there's a couple hundred guys. Uh, I actually rarely talk about their accolades mm-hmm. on the court or off the field. My whole point and the whole Solmanad message is talking to them about, you know, what did they overcome? You know, who was their greatest inspiration? You know, what what, what were their drive their drives and you know what what drove them and what encouraged them? You know, what sets them apart? Um, you know, so whenever I interview them, we we really we re- rarely hit that ESPN style interview. You know, where we're we're going over all the stats and stuff, right, you know, and right. I love it because, you know, like uh, last time when I interviewed you a year ago, you know, they're talking about their mamas and they're talking about yeah. their coaches and they're talking about, you know, that sixth grade math teacher who mm-hmm. tutored them after school and right. just all these life lessons. And that's the nuggets that, that you that I love to get to because that gets to the heart and the integrity of the person. No and I think that is what so many of us can learn, you know, and be inspired uh, from those stories. No question. That's 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 it. And it, that's why I always say it's bigger than the game. You yeah. know, it's bigger than the game. Yep. At least for me, it's bigger than the game. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, coach, I should let you go. Oh, Karen's on here. Hi, Karen. Debbie, Debbie Cobb says she says, I'll go to the DR with you. <laughs> <laughs> 
who knows? I'll have to throw it out there. We'll see if we can't get the band back together again, oh and we'll all goodness. have to head down there. That would be fun. That would be, I, I would be in trouble. All you guys together like that, I would be in trouble. <laughs> I'm not um, anymore. <laughs> oh my gosh, we would have so much fun. Okay. Well, Coach, I should let you go ahead and uh, sign off now. I know that you're there at the... Um, uh, what do you call it? The compound, the, the training yeah, the center. The, facility. Yeah. The Vikings yeah. facility. So I'm sure you probably have the, the nighttime staff outside your office going, coach, you come in time's yeah, up. I, I, hear, I hear a lot of walking. I got my door closed. I hear a lot of walking back and forth. <laughs> Well, all the best to you, Coach. I'm sure Donna's watching right now. God bless you. Love you, Donna. Give my love to the whole family, Coach. And and, and I'll text you in a bit. We'll see when you, we can get you and Donna over here for dinner then, okay? That'd, that'd be great. Thank you so much for having me on. It's a tremendous honor. And, yeah. and then, you know, have two more of my girls on here listening to is, is outstanding. <laughs> you know, we go to Seattle. We play the Seahawks. You know, we didn't get to do it last year because of COVID. But, you know, Debbie always comes over and Karen Moffat always comes over over yeah. and it's always so great to to see you guys and it just it just fills my heart so yeah. i love you guys and uh thanks for having me on thank you love you so much coach all right i'll let you go ahead and sign off and then okay. i'll go ahead and transition to this next segment love you coach we'll talk I soon love you too. all right ciao ciao all right you guys so we what a great interview yeah thanks debbie great interview we all love coach p so much um my uh, producer, Kevin, is going to go ahead and transition that screen over there. And I just have a couple more things that I wanted to touch on today. I was going to bring up in regards to current affairs, the um, the anti-Asian crimes on the uprise. But we did touch on that just a little bit ago. But I have a restaurant that I want to highlight this week. You guys know here at Solmanad, I'll promote a different restaurant, um, privately owned restaurant every single week and let me get these on so i can see my notes here and the one that we're going to highlight this week is uh say sushi it is an asian owned business and it is in maricopa arizona there it is look at that right there 21101 north john wayne parkway suite he is an Echo 103 in Maricopa. Uh, give them a call, place your order. You can drive in and pick it up. Uh, I believe in Arizona they are also open for uh, dining inside as well. Um, so give them a call, you guys. Um, they have it all there. They have sashimi. They've got the bento boxes, the sake drinks. Oh, I bet they have fuki plum wine. You, y'all know I've been to Japan hundreds of times, and I used to love to go and get my gyoza. They have gyoza there too. And then for dessert, I would love to have fuki plum wine it's a sweet sweet uh plum wine uh, you you don't sit there and drink glass after glass it's just a very small amount and you sip it it's delicious they have the tempura they have the udon the gyoza and everything that you would expect look at those pictures fresh seafood absolutely delicious so shout out to uh say sushi i spoke with um one of the employees there today and let them know that we were going to be highlighting them today so god bless you god bless your business and you know i always encourage you guys if you can support these these uh small businesses support these restaurants in your community if you can order from them even if it's just once a month or once a week you know um whatever fits into your lifestyle and and fits into your budget i mean hey you're buying less groceries then right but support those restaurants and those small businesses in your community and if you're there in the phoenix area it's about a half an hour south of phoenix it's called say sushi so check them out right off of north john wayne parkway and we have our tip of the week from Dr. Carrie Getzmeyer. So I'm going to ask uh, Tevin to go ahead and share that with you. Dr. Carrie Getzmeyer has been a regular guest here on the show here on Solmanad, and she uh, practices and is owner of Lake Point Wellness here in the Twin Cities. She will be sharing a tip of the week with us each week. So we have today's tip from Dr. Carrie, who's coming to us from the slopes. So I thank you. Thank you, Dr. Carrie, for taking the time to join us and give us your tip of the week so tevin is that queued up and ready to go hi solmanad community 
today's health tip is all about hydration. So it's important to stay hydrated. Our bodies are over 60% water, or at least they're supposed to be. And hydration is necessary for healthy brains, good muscle function, detoxification, hormones, and more. So once you're already thirsty, thirsty, you're dehydrated. So what we love to do is make sure that you calculate and drink half of your body weight in ounces of water each day. You can also add great electrolytes. I love dynamic hydrate. You just wanna make sure a lot of over-the-counter electrolyte drinks are full of sugar and high fructose corn syrup and they have large molecules so you can't actually absorb them. There are also great natural sources, coconut water, avocado, green leafy, some fruits, and then also drinking lemon water so you can get electrolytes in your daily. And remember to drink your water and stay hydrated for happy, healthy bodies. And we'll see you soon. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dr. Carey, for the tip of the week all about hydration. Stay hydrated. It's great for the skin, too. Helps keep the wrinkles away. <laughs> Stay hydrated. Great for the mind. Great for the nails. Great for the hair. Your entire body just thrives on staying hydrated. My personal goal is to drink a gallon of water a day. I don't know what the exact ounces are, if that's you know, the calculation that she gave, but it, that's my goal. So sometimes I exceed that, you know, I golf so much. And uh, if it's really hot out there on the course when, and I walk in it right in the carts, but I, uh, you know, I'm sure there are many days that I do exceed that, but the other times of the year, you know, I don't exceed it, but if that's my goal, you know, and if I can get in, uh, you know, three quarts or so, yeah, Hey, that's, that, that's doing pretty good. So give yourself a nice, healthy goal and uh, an attainable goal. And uh, if you need to, you can put some, some lemon in it or cucumber, cucumber, uh, orange or something, you know, with just with a little zest. Some people say, I don't like drinking water. It doesn't taste like anything. Well, jazz it up a little bit and, and you'll drink more of it. So thank you so much, Dr. Carrie gets my for the tip of the week. All right, you guys. Um, hey, Sheba, how's it going, girl? Looks delish. Can't wait to go. I know. I know it's going to be great. Hi, Auntie Donna. I'm glad that you're on. And Louise said, thank you so much to coach. Yeah, he's just he's such a wonderful man and um, it's just uh, it was an honor to have him on here I'm sorry you guys that I lost that other um, interview that I had done a year ago but um, I thought you know what coach we just need to get you on here and and uh, I need to I need to share you with the Solmanad community uh, he's always coming with nuggets of truth and and so much wisdom so much insight um, boy what an honor it, it must be for all of these players you know coming out of college and 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 playing under um, such a, a brilliant man and a great master of the game and, and end of life. So um, I thank you, Coach Andre Patterson, for joining us here on uh, the Solmanad Show today. So, all right, you guys, I am going to sign off for now. I came to you from my home studio. Uh, oh, you know what? I forgot to tell you. We have our demo reel that was just completed. Thank you to our producers, Gabe and Tevin. We do have the demo reel that is uh, completed and updated. My last one was probably done about five or six years ago so i do have the updated one you can find that at solmanod s-o-l-m-i-n-o-d.com and um thank you so much to all of my great uh producers and coaches uh there at uh such a voice my voiceover demo reels have also come in and they are both uh, posted there on the website. Uh, once I can figure out how to post it on social media, I will. But you all know I'm a little bit behind in this techie stuff. So anyway, the the, the voiceover reels are there as demo reels are there as well. And that's at solmanod.com. Um, hey, shout out to the bride and groom that I was just able to marry kind of last minute. But it was so exciting, you guys. A week ago here in Minneapolis, I have another wedding that I'll be officiating on the 24th of April. So I'm super excited about that. And uh, shout out to everybody in Mexico. I just saw them uh, recently and to my friends in, in Des Moines. I was able to see quickly and then um, seeing a family there in uh, Mesa earlier this week. And my niece Alyssa is pregnant. I just posted that. Congratulations to Alyssa and Steve and Bernadette. Thank you so much for hosting me. So um, now I'm back in lockdown 
down here for about another month before I head off to um, to Mexico on a girl's trip, uh, COVID compliance, social distancing, and um, I'll just keep taking my tests. I can't wait to get the vaccine. Um, all the best to all of you. I hope that you guys are getting the vaccine. Stay safe. Uh, I know um, Jeffrey Stringer former colleague and friend of mine, honey, I know that you're not feeling so good today because you just got the shot, but, um, you know, just a couple of days, just like Seth, when you had yours a few days ago, I know you were kind of knocked out for a couple of days, but uh, I'm glad that you're feeling better. So if you guys have the opportunity to get that vaccine, if anybody knows how I can get my hands on one, let me know. <laughs> I'm registered here in the state of Minnesota, but uh, so far uh, to no avail, I've not been able to get one. Anyway, I'm going back into lockdown for a month, you guys, but I will be right here uh, at Solmanad. Please feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about anything. And otherwise, we will see you next Wednesday. Y'all stay safe and you stay blessed and whatever you put your hands to do until next time. Ciao.